Florida is among the states gaining the most new residents, adding to the growing problems and stress many Sunshine State residents already have to fight through daily, which is loads and loads of gridlock bumper to bumper traffic, a mixture of commuters to and from work, school buses, and of course, the tourists. Meanwhile, Florida will begin to import drugs from Canada just as doctors report massive spike in illness and flu cases reaching high levels in Florida this winter, and they encourage you to get a jab or two in order to stay safe. Shit hit the fan inside of a local Florida Duncan and an exploding toilet at Orlando Duncan leaves a man filthy and injured, and now he is suing them. Abortion rights groups seek to put abortion on Florida ballot and a tornado just ripped through Fort Lauderdale and storms continue to march across the state of Florida. People begin to panic and hurry up and rush to get ready and prepare for the devastation and looming destruction. Sound the alarms. Is it time to evacuate all these people and get the hell out of Florida? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to another video. My name is Kevin. You're watching Kevin247. And just as a little bit of a disclaimer or full disclosure, keeping it real with you guys. Uh, yes, I do understand. I know that some people are going to complain in the comment section and say, oh, my God, Kevin, why are you reading? Oh, my God, Kevin, why are you holding the microphone? Look, guys, I don't care. You can't please everybody. This is the video that I want to make. This is the information that I want to share. If you are interested in that, then by all means, feel free. Stay tuned. If not, you are not required. You're not being forced to watch this video, nor do you have to mention that you're leaving and unsubscribing because no one cares and also no one will know because those comments never make it to the comment section. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Fox Weather reported a line of storms along a cold front attached to the nor'easter Barreling up the East Coast has also produced reports of funnel clouds, water, water spouts, and damaging wind gusts. And a tornado rolled through Fort Lauderdale, Florida, damaging boats and downing power lines. According to the National Weather Service office in Miami, officials received multiple phone calls and social media reports of a twister near Federal Highway about 5.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The NWS issued a tornado warning for the storm about five minutes before the twister was reported. Fort Lauderdale officials said in a Facebook post that no injuries have been reported and the damage from the storm appears to be minor. A couple from New York was in South Florida to cheer on their Buffalo Bills when they got a tornado warning alert on their cell phones. Moments later, they witnessed the tornado roll through a residential area and a marina and captured the entire event on video. Note, this is all according to Fox Weather and me personally. I am in Florida right now, but I'm not in close proximity to the storm or the damage that it has caused. We are expecting high winds and rain to start picking up here around 1 p.m. in the panhandle and lasting all the way through tomorrow. And I actually received a text message last night from the county that said OCSD is working with county emergency management officials who are monitoring likely severe weather moving into our area Monday evening with the most significant weather passing through the area early Tuesday morning potentially when school buses are running routes and parents are bringing students to school. Following Monday morning weather updates, we will communicate any potential adjustments to Tuesday's morning schedule. No adjustments to Tuesday's schedule have been made at this time. Thank you. It's interesting that they had to put that at the end. No adjustments to Tuesday's schedule have been made at this time. Thank you. Because if they're like me, they understand and realize that some folks are going to read that in a panic and think that Tuesday morning schedule has been adjusted when all they're doing is giving you a heads up and a warning that that could possibly occur. But nothing has nothing has been changed yet. So, uh, yeah. But either way, this could cause some serious inconvenience for some families. But until there is an update, we won't know. Uh, so I know a lot of folks, they got to get to work and they got to get their school, the kids out to school and having their Tuesday morning disrupted by a, a change in school schedule or the kids not going to school could interfere with their ability to go to work and earn a paycheck. But in regard to what happened in Fort Lauderdale, they went on to say we were feeling very pleased with ourselves for missing the snow. 
these are the uh, Buffalo Bills fans. Uh, Megan Collins, she told that. And she's then we said she says, then we got more than we bargained for down in South Florida. Fort Lauderdale's mayor said that utility crews were working to restore power to the region and debris cleanup was would take place on Monday and Tuesday. And NWS team conducted a damage survey on Sunday, determining that it was an EF zero tornado with maximum winds of 80 miles per hour. There were several reports of other severe weather across the Sunshine State on Saturday, including funnel clouds, a water spout, and damaging wind gusts. And the highest thunderstorm wind gusts that have been reported was 52 miles per hour near Pine Island. The storms are associated with a trailing cold front that is attached to a powerful nor'easter moving up the east coast this weekend and the storm has created a mess of ice snow and rain as it chugs through the mid-atlantic and northeast more severe weather is possible in florida in the coming days as another powerful storm moves across the eastern half of the of the country and despite these dangerous weather threats of natural disaster and devastation Florida, according to ABC Action News and the latest U-Haul data released, is among states gaining the most new residents. And U-Haul released data showing Texas and Florida are gaining more residents than other states while California continues to lose residents. Key takeaways include, based on data from U-Haul involving two and a half million moves, Texas topped the list of states People relocated to across state lines in 2023, and it marked the third straight year Texas top U-Haul's list. Texas was then followed by Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Tennessee. Virginia, which was ranked number five in 2022, ended up dropping to number 10. Idaho, which ranked number 10 in 2022, ended up jumping up to number six. And the South dominated the list of top cities with net arrivals. The Palm Bay and Melbourne, Florida area ranked number one, followed by Ocala, Florida. Shout out, Sarah. Charleston, South Carolina, Sarasota, Florida, and Austin, Texas. All 13 of the top towns for net arrivals in 2023 were in the South. Boise, Idaho was the top ranked city for net arrivals not in the South. Nearby Napa, Idaho also cracked the top 25. And so the census, the U.S. Census Bureau released detailed estimates of state to state migration every year. But data for 2023 is not expected to come out until the fall. However, the Bureau's 2022 data showed that Texas gained almost 669,000 residents from out of state in 2022. And that is compared to just under 495,000 who left the state. Meanwhile, California lost over 817,000 people to other states while gaining 475,803. And over 100,000 people moved from California to Texas in 2022, compared to nearly 42,000 who moved from Texas to California. And finally, Cal Connor, the U-Haul company, uh, out of the U-Haul company of Eastern Florida, their president, he said, down here in Florida, we have a low cost of living compared to many of the northern cities that people have left. And to that, our fantastic and add to that our, our fantastic year round climate. And you can see why Palm Bay, Melbourne is such a desirable area to live. And I'm not sure if there's any relation to the amount of inbound transplant to the state of Florida, but the latest breaking news reports Flu cases reach high levels in Florida and doctors encourage more jabs from Pfizer and Moderna and Johnson and Johnson as cases continue to spread. And I even read where they said, if it feels like everyone you know is getting sick right now, that's because we're nearing the height of a respiratory season and how flu goes up this time of the year all the time. Colds go up this time of the year all the time. And this is according to Dr. Thomas uh, Unashed and the public health expert and researcher, which honestly is good for business if you're in the treatment industry and medical field, right? And they said how the CDC is tracking the flu nationwide and has ranked Florida as having high levels of flu activity right now. And recent data from the Florida Department of Health show that the majority of countries or counties across the state are seeing an increase in the number of flu cases. 
In Tampa Bay, the Department of Health, the DOH, has been monitoring outbreaks in Hillsborough and Pasco counties. But maybe the scariest part about it is how they said it's increasing rapidly. And there's a big increase or big jump in hospitalizations for flu, mostly among individuals over the age of 65, which is not surprising. That's our high risk group, end quote. And doctors believe cases will likely continue to surge for the next month noting how flu can cause mild to severe illness, and some of the symptoms can include fever, cough, sore throat, body aches, and headache. But with so many viruses going around, it's important to know that flu and C-19 are treated differently, they said. But doctors said people should get tested if they're sick because there's a lot of crossover between the symptoms of both viruses, so it's hard to know which one you have for sure without being tested. One doctor said, but if you lose your sense of smell, it's very likely it's the Rona. Smells and tastes. Likewise, if you're having that all over your body and aches, uh, what we call the malaise, super tired, likely to be the flu. And that most people who get the flu will recover. But some can develop more serious complications like pneumonia. And that's why doctors are encouraging the jabs for anyone who's eligible. They said with flu, just remember that it generally does kill about 25,000 Americans per year, so it's not something that you really want to mess around with. And their suggestions to prevent illness include what experts say, and that is to encourage hand washing and mask wearing, which they say are highly effective against the flu. And as a final warning of what's to come, the story ended with this, and I quote, as I've said many times before, it doesn't really matter how put, uh, pathogenic a respiratory virus is if it can't get up your nose in the first place, end quote. So to me, it just sounds like future threats to the masses and biological warfare attacks on densely populated areas will be airborne. But let's just hope and pray that we can get the meds in time because the latest from one of the three letter agencies is how the FDA just approved Florida's request to import drugs from Canada. But apparently this latest move is only one of many on the political chess game board and the history of this long running battle to lower drug prices. One of Americans biggest health care headaches and just so happens to be a major element of President Joe Biden's reelection campaign. While right now, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, who is seeking the Republican presidential nomination, is also highlighting his importation proposal as he seeks to curtail drug costs. And funny how the timing seems to just work out and line up, right? And while U.S. law allows drug importation, it never gained traction because of federal health officials' concerns over safety and the actual savings as well as fierce opposition from American drug manufacturers and Republican lawmakers. There needs to be notable mention for former President Donald Trump. However, since he made drug importation a centerpiece of his effort to reduce drug costs and push for federal approval of Florida's proposal years ago. But Florida initially wants to import drugs to treat conditions such as HIV, AIDS, diabetes, hepatitis C and mental illness. However, Major hurdles remain before Florida can actually start importing certain drugs, and it could be a while before the state and its residents see savings. The drug industry is expected to continue its efforts to prevent the imp importation of drugs, and Canada has opposed the mass importation of its medications. Remember, profit over people, folks. And in other news, a customer has filed a negligence lawsuit against Duncan, claiming he was injured by an exploding toilet at one of the coffee chain's locations in central Florida. But it's like, what? Was this some sort of prank video or something? But the man, the victim in this case, is seeking more than $100,000 in a lawsuit filed in the state court in Orlando, claiming he suffered severe and long-term injuries following the explosion of a toilet in the men's room of a Duncan location in Winter Park, Florida. Also, a coalition of Florida abortion rights supporters announced they have gathered enough signatures to put a state constitutional amendment protecting the rights to an abortion on the ballot in 2024, but the Florida Supreme Court still must approve the language of the ballot measure, which is being challenged by Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody. And the proposed amendments reads, 
No law shall prohibit, penalize, delay, or restrict abortion before viability or when necessary to protect the patient's health as determined by the patient's health care provider. Meanwhile, oral arguments are scheduled next month in front of the Florida Supreme Court and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a Republican, appointed five of the seven justices on the current on the current court, giving it a conservative majority. Should the measure make it onto the ballot and be approved by at least 60 percent voters, the amendment would undo Florida's current 15 week ban on abortions. Thank you guys for watching. Please do me a favor, smash the like button for more videos like these and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again. I'll talk to you guys real soon.